Hi there, in this recording I am going to describe kinetic energy in three different ways. Uh, there's the Newtonian kinetic energy formula, there's the Einstein kinetic energy, what's called the relativistic energy formula, and then the final part is the pi space kinetic energy formula. They all represent the same they're all measuring the same thing um, it's just that they're all doing it in their own way so I'll explain the the stuff you learn in high school or or whatever type of school you go to and then uh, lower school and then I'll talk about how that formula is applied to the Einstein uh, special relativity uh, case and then the pi space case which is what I would call an advanced pi space formula so I have my own version of that formula but it, it really it's illustrative even if you're not interested in the pi space kinetic energy formula it's instructive if you want to try and understand what kinetic energy is so this is uh, what I'm showing you here is up on the pi space at uh, uh, theory uh, website it's the introduction to pi space uh, document and uh, so these are the two first examples so kinetic energy is really all about summing up the the movement of an object from a starting velocity uh, to a final velocity VF and it's the distance that an object travels over so it has a distance component and uh, an acceleration component uh, so the the way to derive it in the Newtonian world is kinetic energy is the mass times the acceleration times the distance. Um, then what uh, Newton did was he took, uh, he assumed, and this is key to understanding all of the Newtonian formulas. What new, If you ever look at the Newtonian theory, there's almost no integration in it, and and yet it works. And the reason why it works is, he, he got around using integration by using what was called the average velocity so he knows he knew that the final velocity divided by time was equal to the acceleration and then what he did was which was quite a quite a nice move uh, simplification was that he um, he multiplied by uh, the the average velocity um, which was the VF over 2 right so the reason why there's a half VF is the final velocity what he did was he multiplied each moment in time by an average velocity so what he imagined was that the rate of change of velocity uh, was constant um, so he therefore said hey I can come up with a, an average velocity which is VF over 2 and I can multiply the average velocity uh, times the final velocity divided by time so in other words he, 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 he has this idea that there is an average which uh, is sort of literally sitting in the middle so you start at velocity 0 then you end up at a final velocity VF and halfway through that, that, that uh, acceleration uh, you have this middle point and he just says it's just the half of the final velocity now we know we know in a relativistic uh, uh, formula version that that can't be true because uh, if you look at the Einstein world uh, you know acceleration tails off and you know um, the velocities aren't exactly linear but the, here's the thing the average velocity concept works um, in in uh, in a weak gravity field, because the rate of change of velocity is uh, is is constant, right? Okay, and then what he gets in the very final part is one half of m v squared, right? Now, what's really really interesting about this point, this formula is, is that what we're actually dealing with here is what's called energy, not velocity. And there was a very big debate uh, when in the early 1700s about this idea of squaring the velocity. There were a lot of people who didn't like this idea of energy. 
and um, some French uh, uh, folks um, want, believed in this idea of squaring the velocity. They believed that energy was the square of the velocity, but there were people who thought this wasn't correct, right? And there was sort of an, an almost an ideological um, debate about it. And there was a very famous experiment done where an object was dropped from a height by some uh, guy in Copenhagen, I think it was, and he, he proved by dropping an object from a certain height and another height, the amount of sand that was displaced grew grew with this as a square of the distance and they were able to formulate this idea of squaring the velocity. So the energy idea, which we all completely take for granted today, was actually quite a novel idea. But even today, people are still not really sure what energy means. We, we do use it and we do know that, it, you know, you put energy through a house, but people aren't exactly sure what it means. And today we use that formula and we just say half mv squared and it's foundational. So we move on from this. I will talk about this energy idea in Pi space later. I just want to bring up the concept of energy as opposed to velocity. It's the squaring of the velocity. The squaring is kind of important. And so anyway, I have a, a diagram here that explains some kind of uh, loss of, of, of area in Pi space due to the movement. All right. So let's just focus on the Einstein version next. Now Einstein, Einstein um, came up with the special relativity idea and he knew he knew that um, that the energy of an object uh, it wasn't as simple as just squaring the velocity he he came up with this uh, formula which is the e is equal to mc squared so what he did was he, I won't derive e is equal to mc squared everybody just knows it but he he knew that there's two frames of reference there's the 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 stationary frame of reference, which is um which is the m zero c squared reference, uh which is the rest mass, and then there's the concept of somebody moving right. So you his, what he thought was well okay the energy there must be two energy states. There's the individual who's moving, and then there's the individual who's at rest. Uh, so he said. That's essentially the energy difference. So he came up with this original formula, and then um, he, I have it here twice, and then here is the final version of it. He applied special relativity, and this is the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation. So he basically said that it's the he the way he calculated it was it's the it's the moving uh, frame of reference, which is uh, which is this one here. Uh, minus the uh, mc squared and that's 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 called the relativistic uh, kinetic energy formula and that's that's pretty well established now that's that what that means is that there's somebody moving uh, and you divide by the Lorentz Fitzgerald transformation which means that your energy is higher so if you were to translate this formula into English what it means is that the that when you move you have higher energy this was Einstein's thinking when you move, you have higher, higher energy, uh, which is this part, right? And then you then subtract the rest uh, version, which is the mc squared, and therefore you get your kinetic energy. So you're moving, your moving energy versus your stationary energy is your kinetic energy. Uh, there's only one issue with this. Uh, there's only one issue with this formula, and uh, for me, and um, this is something that I'll discuss in a minute, and it's just that it produces infinities. It means that if you uh, move at higher velocities um, towards the speed of light, you can pretty much see that here in this formula, that when you reach the speed of light, this uh, value here uh, on the left becomes zero. So you're dividing by zero, and you get an you get an inf you get infinity. Uh, so you get you get like you get like that your kinetic energy is infinity. So. So that, that raises an interesting question. How can an object's uh, energy become infinity, right? So, so let's just take that equation as it is and just say that it produces an infinity when you're close to the, uh, the speed of light. So in other words, what it's saying is if you're trying to accelerate something up to the speed of light, it's relativistic Einstein kinetic energy is infinity. Okay, so that's that formula. 
So the the Newtonian one is a half mv squared, and and the you know you see, your teacher will will probably tell you about the idea of a um, an object which uh, is, a roller coaster is the classic example that when you're at the top of the roller coaster and then you go down your potential energy is converted into your kinetic energy and it's about movement right so um, so that's kinetic energy now so that's that formula that's it there uh, it's 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 on the document it's in the it's in the, uh, the the pi space theory document so now I'm going to switch over to what I call the advanced theory advanced pi space formulas uh, theory right and and if you're not interested in learning about this you can finish here but if you just want to just understand what does it kinetic energy mean even at a high level what does it really mean uh, in pi space and what does it mean logically this I can explain what it means logically without you caring about the formula so the first part is uh, kinetic energy uh, in pi space the, the the Newtonian equation is a half mv squared if you put the speed of light into it, the half mv squared um, you get some value back out of it which isn't relativistic and it's less than than c squared so that you can't use you can't use it in for v is uh, less than c which you can use it for v less than less than c is small value okay so this is this is the formula I'll first tell you the formula right this is the formula in pi space the kinetic energy uh, of an object uh, based on knowing its velocity is 1 minus the cos of arc sine v over c so the idea is that um, that is that is the, uh, the uh, that's that's its energy the units of this formula are 1 over c squared so if you want it if you it will give you an energy result uh, or if you, uh, uh, <clears throat> 1 over c squared so that's what it gives you if you want to if you want to uh, uh, get a velocity value back and um, you got to multiply it by uh, by 1 over c right you, you got to multiply it sorry you got to multiply it by by constant c right so you get an you get an area value so in pi space it's really simple and any form of, of acceleration is an area loss so basically what this formula is doing is summing up what this formula does is it sums up the the amount of, of area loss of an object due to an ex constant acceleration um, and and uh, the, the constant area gain is represented in terms of it, the, the atoms diameter uh, you sum up the velocities using integration right so it the here so this is the integral. You have an integral of zero to v over c, and uh, sine x dx, and that produces uh, that produces uh, x equals v over c, right? And that produces this formula here, which is one minus the cos of v over c, right? That's the original. That's the initial version. Uh, next. The the issue is is that the con the vert is that the when you travel from zero to the speed of light. Um, using cos and, and arc sine, cos and sine I should say, uh, you need to use the arc sine, right? Because the reason you need to use the arc sine is uh, the arc sine takes a value 0 to 1 and it maps to 0 to pi over 2. And in our case, 1 is v over c, so it maps uh, from pi space velocity to the trigonometric version of our pi space formulas. So this is the, this is the actual value here, right? The value is 1 minus the cos of arc sine v over c. Uh, the original one was just 1 minus cos v over c. But if you convert uh, velocity into pi space and you put it into this formula, you need to use arc sine because, because uh, v over c is uh, maps to 0 to pi over 2 as opposed to 0 to 1. And, and, and that's it. That, that's the formula. It's really simple. Uh, and what you can do is pl pass in any uh, value of v into it and uh, I have the formulas page where I show worked examples and you can put in uh, you can put in values now what's what's the difference between this and uh, and the new and the, and the Newtonian result so in the Newtonian uh, result uh, at velocity uh, equals as uh, 0 0.1 C the Newtonian result is 0 0.05 and 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 what's really interesting about this formula is um, if you if you put in a small value of v uh, what you'll get is what you'll get back is the same value 
as you get for um, for the Newtonian equation. But in the on the higher values, you get different answers. So so basically, uh, when you when you put in um, when you put in uh, values for um, for almost going to the speed of light, what you get out of it is you get a a return a result in, where the the value the kinetic energy component of an object is actually c squared. So you know the way you have the equation where it goes e is equal to m c squared. When you push when you push v equals to c into the formula I just showed you, you get e is equal to m c squared, right? Now, so here's here's an example of of the equations and the values that you get back out. As you can see, they they pretty much match um, the Newtonian values at the lower va at the lower rates, right? Uh, at the lower values, like zero point one times the speed of light. But as you go higher, when you get up to the speed of light, you can see at w at a velocity one point zero, which is the speed of light you get back one, which is c squared. So it, it, what you get is e is equal to mc squared. Now, that do, now here's the thing. Uh, the, the Einstein re, re, uh, relativistic equation gives you back uh, an infinity, right? So you might say, well, the formula is not correct because it should re my formula should return infinity. And basically, uh, the way the way it works is this is the Einstein equation uh, this is the this is the uh, the pi space equation here and then what we can do is we can simplify this equation uh, to to the square root equivalent right which is this and you get this 1 minus 1 minus the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared right and then where 1 is equal to mc squared uh, you get this value. You get mc squared minus mc squared one minus v squared over c squared, right? So, uh, so what my formula is doing is giving you a very similar formula to the Einstein relativistic kinetic energy formula. The difference is is that is that the is that Einstein's approach was that when you move, you you gain uh, energy, and you subtract it off the rest. In pi space, it is clear that when you move at velocity, you lose area. In other words, the stationary object always has higher energy. So in other words, this is the stationary object here, and then this is the moving component. So what, so Einstein subtracted the, the stationary object uh, the the moving object from the stationary object I am subtracting the stationary object from the moving object so that's the only difference between the relativistic formula now one of the major uh, arguments in favor of the Einstein equation being correct is that if you expand it out into a binomial expansion in Mathematica uh, uh, binomial expansion you get this you get 1 plus x squared over 2 which maps to a half mv squared so Einstein uh, equation uh, gives you the one plus x squared, and the, and the, and then what people say is, well, then the Einstein equation is correct because uh, x squared over two is the same as half m v squared over two. So if you apply the same analysis to the pi space equation, the binomial expansion, the the only difference is is that you get one minus x squared. Now don't remember the the Einstein equation was one plus this is one minus so it's so what you get is this mc squared minus a uh, m a half mv squared um and then the, the the terms work out so basically the movement is is a, is is so the the energy of a moving object is lower uh in a in pi space for the moving object and therefore you get a half mv squared so so that's it that's the you, if you're not really sure about the detail of this it's on the advanced pi space formulas but this is the that is the uh, the pi space version of this formula uh, it's one minus the cos arc sine v over c on the website there is ex worked examples and it's it's pretty straightforward that's it thanks for listening